SpaceX designed the Falcon 1 from the ground up for high reliability and cost efficiency. The first and smallest in the SpaceX family of launch vehicles, the Falcon 1 measures 1.7 meters in diameter, 21.3 meters tall, with a mass of just over 27 and a half metric tons at liftoff. It can lift 420 kilograms into low Earth orbit. High performance carbon composite materials provide the optimal strength to weight ratio necessary for each of the two stages. The SpaceX developed Merlin engine powers the first stage. A turbo pump feeds RP-1 rocket-grade kerosene and liquid oxygen into the engine, generating over 78,000 pounds of thrust at sea level. Hydraulic actuators using pressurized fuel as working fluid steer the first stage. Gimbling of the exhaust from the turbo pump's gas generator provides for roll control during ascent. With a specific impulse of 304 seconds, the regeneratively cooled Merlin engine ranks on par with the highest performing gas generator cycle rocket engines ever built. The lower portion of the first stage tank structure contains about 6,800 kilograms of the RP-1 fuel. Halfway up, a common dome separates it from the LOX tank, which holds about 14,500 kilograms of liquid oxygen. The black interstage section, constructed of carbon fiber composites, tops off the first stage and contains the stage separation systems. The flight computer activates stage separation by firing three redundant pyrotechnic bolts. Then, pneumatic pushers separate the two stages. The first stage returns to Earth by parachute for a water landing and recovery, much like the Space Shuttle solid rocket boosters. The interstage section also houses the Kestrel second stage engine. Kestrel generates 6,900 pounds of thrust and uses high pressure helium instead of a turbo pump to feed RP-1 and liquid oxygen into the engine. During flight, Kestrel burns for approximately 420 seconds. It features a radiatively cooled nozzle extension, optimized for use in the vacuum of space. A pyrophoric ignition system makes Kestrel restartable on orbit, allowing for the deployment of payloads into different orbits on a single mission. Like Merlin, SpaceX completely designed and built the Kestrel engine in-house. Falcon 1's second stage resembles a truncated version of the first stage with a fuel tank holding 1,200 kilograms of RP-1, a common dome, and LOX tank holding 2,700 kilograms of liquid oxygen. The top of the second stage houses the flight computer, which commands all major vehicle activities. The inertial measurement unit tracks the vehicle's rates of acceleration throughout flight. Transmitters to relay telemetry and video signals back to ground stations. Batteries and a flight termination system. Above the Falcon 1 avionics bay lies the payload. An aluminum alloy fairing or nose cone measuring 1.5 meters in diameter and 3.5 meters high protects the payload during ascent. About 30 seconds into the second stage engine burn, the fairing separates in two halves and falls away from the payload and clear of the vehicle. Falcon 1 provides the world's lowest cost ride to orbit for small payloads. It also serves as a test platform for the development of the much larger man-rated Falcon 9 booster, which SpaceX plans to debut by the end of 2008 and fly in 2009. Max, I think, I think we're a little less than 15 minutes from launch. So I was wondering if you could tell us about the preparations for today's launch out in Quaj and a little bit about the mission profile. Sure. The uh, vehicle is designed to be integrated horizontally inside the uh, integration hangar that we have on the island next to the launch pad. Um, the stages are shipped there. Usually they're shipped there separately with the first stage, which is much larger, being uh, shipped on a uh, regular cargo barge. Uh, and the second stage being launched, being uh, sent on a DC-8 uh, cargo aircraft that regularly flies into Kwajalein. However, on this occasion, we put the whole vehicle uh, in a single C-17 from the uh, U.S. Army and uh, flew it there all at once. Um, once it gets to the island of Omelec, it is the stages are integrated together, they're checked out, and then integrated together, then checked out together. Uh, the payload, in this case a mass simulator, is integrated to the payload adapter and encapsulated in the fairing and then that is mated to the rest of the vehicle and when the whole vehicle is ready uh, it's rolled out to the pad which is just a few hundred feet away from the hangar 
and uh, connected to the launch mount and erected using the uh, transporter erector hydraulics. Uh, this approach dramatically reduces the cost of the ground infrastructure. Uh, it completely uh, um, obviates the need for large vertical structures around the pad to get to the rocket uh, while it's vertical on the pad because if there's a problem you just come down horizontal again and take it back in the hangar. It also is safer because it means that all the ground processing can be done at ground level uh, which is both uh, less expensive and safer for the personnel. Uh, the first stage of course, both the stages are built in the factory here in Hawthorne, California. They are taken to the SpaceX Propulsion and Structures test site in Texas, in central Texas near Waco, um, to be proof tested for the structures and to be actually fired for the engines. Um, and then final integration is back in Hawthorne. Um, the the uh, facilities there on Omelec uh, include an uh, integration hangar and a clean room for payload integration that uh, allows us to integrate sensitive spacecraft um, and encapsulate them prior to uh, exposing them to the elements, which are quite um, obviously hard on a spacecraft or a launch vehicle. Um, so once it is uh, rolled out, then uh, it's connected to the launch mount and all the various fluid and gas connections are made and they're proofed, uh, usually by a team on the island or by in cooperation between a team on the island and a team back at the launch control center that's doing remote control. Uh, and then uh, flight termination system checks and radio checks with the range support systems. Uh, and then we may or may not do a wet dress where we fuel the vehicle fully um, or a static fire where you fuel the vehicle and launch the en and, and light the engine for a few seconds before shutting it down again. Uh, on this occasion we did a static fire about a week ago and rolled back into the hangar and then we came back again and we are launching without a static fire on this occasion. Um, so on the day of launch, um, there is basically two procedures that are run. There is the pad preparations procedure and the countdown procedure. Both of them are approximately two hours in length. Um, the um, the uh, pad preps includes all the, the checks for lightning and cloud cover and weather conditions, um, comm checks between LCC, the launch control center, and the vehicle. Um, all the remove before flight items, the ground crew ensures that they are off the vehicle and are counted for, uh, and all the uh, data recorders and cameras are set, uh, some various checks, final checks of the vehicle and the ground system. Uh, and then finally, the hold down pins are removed. So the, the pins that physically prevent the vehicle from being released from the launch pad are removed, and uh, from then on you're depending on the hydraulic system to hold the vehicle down. Uh, at that point, about two hours before launch, you finish the pad preps procedure and the pad team evacuates the island because the island is only seven acres at high tide and uh, is too small to have personnel on the island while the vehicle is being fueled. So they fall back to the next major island to the south, which is called Mech. It's about one and a half miles south of Amalek. And uh, from that time on, the vehicle is completely uh, remotely controlled from the launch control center on Kwajalein. Uh, the countdown procedure consists of a series of checks, um, notices to airmen, notices to mariners. Um, we get COLAs or collision avoidance um, schedules from NORAD uh, to ensure that we don't launch too close to any existing spacecraft or debris in Earth orbit. Uh, we get weather updates, whether balloons are launched on a regular basis and uh, provide input with upper level winds and wind shear so that we know whether it's uh, acceptable for launch. And uh, the range does a series of other checks for uh, the tracking systems and communication systems. Um, then there is final configuration of the pad. And uh, at that point, uh, about T minus one hour or one hour, 15 minutes, they start fueling the vehicle. Initially, uh, there is LOX load, and that fills typically to 95% and then goes into what's called a topping mode because LOX is boiling off continuously. Uh, it doesn't stay full the way the fuel, the RP-1 kerosene, stays full. So um, it fills to 95%, then goes into a topping mode. The uh, fuel is loaded starting in 55 minutes before launch. Uh, around T-30 minus minutes, which was a few minutes ago, there's a status update from the range verifying that they are still green to support the launch. Uh, T-10 minutes, which is an optional hold, 
Uh, there's final verification of colas, and uh, coming out of that, there is a fi there is a poll uh, to ensure that SpaceX and the range and the payload customer, and the on the occasions that we have a payload customer, everybody is go for launch. Uh, some FTS checks, uh, three minutes, uh, T minus three minutes. The GSO, the ground safety officer, enables ignition, and uh, then it all leads down to the final 60 seconds, which is all. In fact, the final 10 minutes is entirely autonomously controlled by uh, ground software. And uh, the final one minute gets exciting. Uh, you see about 55 seconds before launch, there is a thrust vector control um, test, which wiggles the uh, engine nozzle, verifies that it's responding correctly. Um, T minus 30 or 40 seconds, the various tanks are pressurized for flight. Uh, T minus 30 seconds, the water deluge comes on. That uh, dumps a lot of water between the engine nozzle and the pad. It reduces acoustics and uh, also helps to protect the pad from the blast of the engine uh, during liftoff. Uh, and then about uh, three seconds before launch, the engine is ignited. And you'll see that it burns for about three seconds prior to liftoff. And that's because if anything is off nominal at that time, we can detect it. Half a second before liftoff, there is an autonomous check by the flight computer. And if any of about 70 parameters are outside of the predetermined thresholds, then the flight computer will shut down the engine and safe the vehicle, rather than releasing it for flight. This is a major reliability enhancement for the vehicle. Uh, and then at T0, if all is well, uh, the uh, vehicle is released for flight. So uh, let's take a look at the rocket here on the pad. You can see a lot of condensation coming off the top of both stages. Uh, that is the uh, result of the very cold liquid oxygen or vapor, oxygen vapor coming out the vent valves at the top of both stages. Uh, in the minute before launch, you'll see that condensation stop when they close the valves to pressurize each of the two stages. We are uh, about six minutes from launch, six and a half minutes from launch, which means we are halfway through, about halfway through the, the terminal count, it's called. Max, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the payload that we designed here that is being carried on the Flight 4? This mission is launching with a mass simulator. Uh, it's about 160 kilograms, uh, about five feet high. It's an aluminum tube designed to emulate the way a spacecraft behaves uh, when attached to the vehicle. So it has similar modes, similar dynamic modes to uh, a, an actual spacecraft it will not separate from the vehicle in this occasion. So we will reach orbit, we will send a deploy command, but there is no deployment system. So far we are proceeding without any hold, and we are about five minutes from launch. Uh, Max, how about telling us a little bit about what we're gonna see post-launch in the few minutes we have here, and then I think we'll keep our video live on the launch site here as we are you know, getting down to five minutes. Sure. At uh, T0, as I mentioned, the vehicle lifts off the pad. The, uh, the flight computer, when it detects everything is nominal, chamber pressure is uh, nominal, it tells the Go hydraulic hold down system to release the vehicle, and at that point it lifts off the pad. The first stage engine, called Merlin, burns for approximately 160 seconds, um, from 2.5 seconds before liftoff until about 157 seconds into flight. Uh, it propels the vehicle from being stationary on the pad uh, about five feet above sea level to over 85 kilometers altitude and 2.8 kilometers per second, which is about Mark 8. For the first uh, 10 seconds of flight, the vehicle flies basically straight up from the launch pad, uh, and then it begins, it, it does what's called a pitch maneuver. Um, it begins to angle itself downrange so it can build up some uh, velocity in the down track. Getting to orbit is all about velocity. It's not about altitude. Uh, it's about 20 times as much energy in the kinetic and getting going fast enough to stay in orbit as Your there is in the, um, in, the, in the potential energy to get high enough. So uh, you start moving down range very quickly and really just want to get up out of the atmosphere and then accelerate laterally. Um, about 56 seconds into flight, it goes transonic and becomes supersonic. Uh, shortly thereafter, it passes through a phase known as max Q uh, which is maximum dynamic pressure. It's the most stressful time for the vehicle structure. Uh, about 156, 158 seconds after launch, the propellants in the first stage are exhausted and the Merlin engine is shut down. This is called a main engine cutoff or MECO. 
and about five seconds later the stages separate. Um, we are going to take about a two minute break and uh, just watch the vehicle on the pad here. Bottle chill is ending. Deck four is on. LA nine is off. RF power is on. Verified and current. T minus, two minutes and counting. Battery chargers are off. Step 119, LD, verify SpaceX is green. This is, this is LD, LD. SpaceX is green. T minus, one minute and Goos are switched to range source. Thirty-five seconds mark. Step one twenty. RCO verify the range is green. Range is green. Moving to internal power. Pre-valve antenna heater is off. Vehicle in auto idle. Minus 60 seconds in. Coming. Vehicles and startup. We are at T minus 48 seconds and counting. TVC we motion are just verified. Going to listen seconds. to the countdown net. You'll Field hear the uh, launch set. conductor calling out the uh, count as we approach T zero here. 35. Now. 30. First stage tank pressing. Deck one is triggered. Yeah. Waterloo system is on. 25. Vehicle navigation verified. First stage tank stabilized. Second stage tank pressing. 20. Second stage tank stabilized. 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7. You may hear some noise in the. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero. We're in stage and one. we're flying. We have liftoff. SpaceX Falcon uh -oh. 1 launch vehicle. Falcon has cleared the tower. Plus 12. Pitch kick. Plus 20 seconds. Are they, are they here? Vehicle navigation nominal and gravity turn. Oh, we have that. Power systems nominal. T plus 60 seconds. Got max Q. First stage propulsion performance is nominal. 
vehicle has a velocity of 630 meters per second. You can see the plume of, of the vehicle, kilometers. the plume of the engine expanding as we get into more rarefied atmosphere. It also gets blacker as there's less and less at oxygen to support post-combustion. Vehicle has a current velocity of 1,000 meters per second and altitude of 32 kilometers. T plus two minutes. Vehicle is down, has an altitude of 50 kilometers, a velocity of 1,700 meters per second. We are approaching main engine cutoff. There will be a five second delay before stage separation. Second stage staying stable. Nico. Ah, stage separation confirmed. And Kestrel ignition. Perfect. Second stage of the Capture maneuver. You can hear there the cheers the in the background. Stiffening van. You can see the limb of the earth in the upper left side of the screen. The Kestrel engine will burn for more than six minutes during the ride to orbit. Here we see fairing separation. There goes the fairing. Separation confirmed. Second stage propulsion performance is nominal. We're at three minutes and 30 seconds into the flight. We have a relative velocity of 2,800 meters per second and an altitude of 170, 170 kilometers. Second stage guidance is nominal. T plus four minutes. We're at T plus four minutes. We have a relative velocity of approximately 3,000 meters per second and an altitude of 200 kilometers. See the Kestrel nozzle glowing a dull red. It's actually designed to glow almost white hot if necessary. Very steady attitude we're seeing. five minutes we have a relative velocity of approximately 3200 meters per second and an altitude of 253 kilometers all systems are nominal The vast majority of the acceleration occurs during this latter half of the second stage burn. As the mass of the vehicle, propellant load decreases. We're at T plus seven minutes. We have a relative velocity of 4,200 meters per second and an altitude of 315 kilometers. Beginning to lose stage one telemetry.
Second stage propulsion is performing nominally. Guides is performing nominally. We are getting very close to orbital velocity. 5,200 meters per second and an altitude of 328 kilometers. We uh, appear to have loss of signal. That is not necessarily a bad thing. We were expecting to lose signal sometime around here. It can be highly variable um, depending on the weather conditions at the time. Um, so we, of course, want to see what happens for the next 60 seconds. We were about 60 seconds away from a nominal shutdown. We will be getting back to you just as soon as we have more information. telemetry and video. Here's behind us of our employees. Nine minutes, 30 seconds. Second stage approaching SECO. And that would be a nominal SECO. SECO's in confirm. Which means Falcon 1 has okay, made history confirmed. as the first privately developed launch vehicle to reach Earth orbit from the ground. That was not... <laughs> Repeating, simulated payload deploy confirmed. T plus 10 minutes. You're seeing a forward shot, that is where RTS you would normally nice see a payload separation. In this support. case, we are not separating the Hey, payload. congratulations. This is fantastic. Thank you. And Still showing active on second stage telemetry. We are heading over the horizon with respect to the launch range, so we are expecting loss of signal any second now. You can see it's starting to break up. But this is a very good day at SpaceX. Max, I think it's important once we, when we lose our signal here to put this in perspective see, we have, uh, what SpaceX has been radars, able to achieve uh, today. Yes, the SpaceX has radars. designed and developed this vehicle from the ground up from a blank sheet of paper. They've done all the design, all the testing in-house. We don't outsource. And we have achieved this with a company that is only now 500 people, and it has all occurred in under six years. And this is just the groundbreaker. This is just the uh, vanguard of the much larger Falcon 9 launch vehicle debuting from Cape Canaveral next year and the Dragon spacecraft that will be debuting in June of next year and will be providing cargo services to the International Space Station. So we have big plans even beyond that here at SpaceX, including human space transportation in the Dragon launch vehicle and on the uh, Falcon 9 launch, uh, launch vehicle and the Dragon spacecraft. And uh, this is really just the beginning. It's, it's just the tip of the iceberg here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people here who have worked very hard for a very long time. Tremendous commitment from them and from their families to get to this point. It's really an incredible achievement. You can hear the cheers in the background from the amazing team that we have here at SpaceX. It's, uh, only about 550 people on the team, and we've just managed to do what very few companies around the world have ever done. It's going to be celebration on Quadrillion tonight, I can tell you. Wish I was there. Max, let's recap the launch for, the, for people who hopefully hadn't just tuned in. 
Um, <laughs> we had a picture-perfect launch, um, ride to space, and perfect separation. So um, do you want to review the, uh, the, the mission for us here? Sure. We, uh, we've gotten very close before now. The uh, second launch of the Falcon 1 got to uh, over eight minutes of uh, powered flight and got very close. Uh, we had a control issue with the second stage. Then the third flight, just two months ago, um, was a great flight from the first stage perspective, but we had a separation anomaly, as people know. And uh, this time we got through first stage, we got through stage sep, we got through fairing separation, and we got through over six minutes of second stage burn, and uh, we reached a uh, nominal orbit. So that vehicle is uh, fully operational. And... Uh, we just uh, couldn't have expected a, a smoother countdown today and then a, a smoother execution today. Huge congratulations to the launch team there on Kwajalein. And I know we had a lot of support from people from all over the world. We received thousands of emails wishing everybody well here. So I really want to thank all of you who have been with us since the beginning and watched us through our growth at SpaceX and continue to be part of our family here. We're hoping at some point to be able to get our um, CEO and CTO Elon Musk over to our live webcast but um, we'll see where he is on the floor and hopefully at some point be able to, to have him over here to speak with you. I'm hearing also that the coast phase telemetry is coming down uh, as expected. We have a low rate telemetry system uh, translating information from orbit. Yeah. What we're hearing in the background is Elon Musk addressing the employees of SpaceX. Well, thing. Hi. Hi. Hey. Uh, all right. What? <laughs> That was freaking awesome. We we made orbit. I, it's, it's like, uh, you know, th uh, you know, thanks to the, the hard work of basically, the, you know, the SpaceX team. You know, all you guys. I mean, that's really uh, what got us to orbit there. And there are a lot of people that thought we couldn't do it. Um, a lot, actually. <laughs> but you know, the same goes. Fourth time's the charm, right? I mean. So <laughs> So, I, I mean, this this really means a lot to SpaceX. Obviously, I mean, getting to orbit, I mean, that's just a huge milestone. There's only a handful of countries on Earth that have done it. It's normally a country thing, not a company thing. So it's just an, an amazing achievement. Um, you know, the, uh, I mean, I, I, my mind's kind of frazzled, so it's kind of hard for me to say anything. But, uh, man, definitely uh, this is one of the greatest days of my life, and I think probably for most people here. Um, it's, uh, you know, we've shown people we can do it, and this is just the first step in many. I mean, we're, we're going to, you know, get to Falcon 9 to orbit next year, uh, get the Dragon spacecraft going. I mean, you know, we're, we're going to be taking over for the, for the space shuttle when that retires. Um, I mean, this is, you know, we're going to do uh, a lot of things, you know, ultimately, I think, even, you know, getting to Mars and, and things like that. So, I think the, this is definitely the future of SpaceX is really great. I mean, this is. say because I mean it's just like so freaking awesome my mind's blown so it just uh, you know except just like say re reaffirm this is just the this is just the first step of many um, and this really opens the way for us to uh, you know 
get Falcon 9 going, get you know, manned space flight. I mean, there's just so many cool things that, that, are, that, that are there in the future. Um, and I'm gonna, I mean, I have a really great party tonight. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> so, uh, I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go talk on the webcast thing so I can tell people what, what went, what, what went on. Um, yeah. Uh, it, Rat said, I believe, is currently orbiting at 3:30 by 6:50. Al almost exactly. <laughs> Rat said, is in orbit. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> So it's, it's uh, it got an uh, apogee is about a couple hundred kilometers above the space station. So, yeah, if somebody could take a picture of it, there'd be like this logo of a rat on the satellite. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to talk in the webcast. Uh, but congratulations, everyone. This is your hard work that made this happen. Of course, is our, our CEO and CTO of this flight and the founder of SpaceX. And Elon, congratulations. Yeah, thanks, Sam. a fine day. A lot uh, of people call this a nominal <laughs> launch. We call it phenomenal. Um, so, absolutely. It's great. Tell us what you're feeling. Um, definitely one of the best days of my life, and I think also for a lot of people here at SpaceX. Uh, it's the, the culmination of a, of a dream. And, uh, it, it, yeah, it's just um, kind of mind-blowing, actually. So... I can hear myself actually echoing back there. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just, uh, I mean, my, I think my nervous system almost got fried uh, just watching that, that flight. So, um, you know, as, as, yeah, wow. I know I heard you so. the other day in an interview say that you wouldn't need to build any more rockets because if we were successful, you'd already be over the moon. <laughs> right, exactly. Is that true? I think I think I probably am over the moon. Uh, yeah. Um, and we missed some of what yeah. you were saying to the employees over there. We couldn't really hear online here. Are you able to repeat for some of this what you told your employees, like right right after the launch? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess. Um, yeah, the, I mean, the important thing is that this this is really just the you know the first step for SpaceX. We're really uh, we've shown we can get to orbit, and um, we're going to do we're going to do that repeatedly now. I think what we've shown is that we've eliminated uh, the, any design errors uh, with, with the vehicle. If you look at the the issues with the first three flights, they were really um, you know design errors in the case of a c c corroded nut, and then um, you know the the second stage. Um, guidance plus slush baffles thing and then the third mission was the fact that we had a, a brand new engine with uh, an, uh, an un, you know an uncharacterized uh, thrust transient and vacuum um, but now we've eliminated those design issues and so um, you know, really in order for us to have a, um, con continued success it's it's going to be ensuring that we have good configuration control uh, good uh, production and quality assurance processes um, you know, just doing all of the appropriate things as far as mission assurance is concerned, but I think it's it's certainly um, possible for us to have a um, I think possible for us to have an unbroken success record uh, now that the design issues are are taken care of uh, with Falcon One, and also for Falcon Nine, this bodes well because if you look at the components on on Falcon One, you've got the the Merlin One C engine on Falcon One. It's the same engine that's on on Falcon Nine. Um, actually, let's move this thing. Sorry. Hi, technology. 
Um, yeah, so uh, we've got a lot of the same components on Falcon 1 as Falcon 9. Uh, you know, in terms of the software, um, you know, certainly guidance, navigation, and control is substantially the same between Falcon 1 and Falcon 9. Uh, the engine, you know, propulsion system is substantially the same. There's more of them, more engines, but it's the same same fundamental engine. And um, of course, we've already shown that we can do nine engines uh, simultaneously and fire those repeatedly on our test stand in Texas with, without a problem. So I think that what you're seeing here bodes well not just for Falcon 1, but also for Falcon 9. Um, and uh, it's really just the, the first step for SpaceX. Um, and next year we'll be doing our, our, our uh, first launch for the NASA Commercial Orbital Transportation Services Program and um, it, you, with both Falcon 9 and our Dragon spacecraft. Uh, Is the Falcon 9 going down to the Cape before the end of the year? Yeah, absolutely. We, we expect to have Falcon 9 um, vertical at the Cape by the end of this year. And, uh, and then... Um, probably do our first uh, launch, um, you know, in the uh, in the second quarter of next year. Yeah, I mean, we had a lot of sidebars here. We were going to talk about we were going to talk about our Cape construction and about COTS, but the launch went so perfectly and so perfectly on time <laughs> right. that we had no time to do that. So we do have a lot on our website, but um, we're hoping that as time goes on, we'll we'll be able to learn more about each one of those. Yeah, absolutely. The launch. This was the smoothest launch countdown of, of all. Um, and it just shows that you know the team's getting more and more practiced at, at these things, and um, you know the systems are getting smoother and smoother. All the bugs are getting worked out, and um, we look forward to doing a lot of Falcon One launches and a lot of Falcon Nine launches, and um, and, and really uh, you know continuously improving to the point where we're the, the world's leading provider of, of, of space launch. That's fantastic. All right, thank well, you. I'm so glad you could join us, and again, congratulations. Thank you. Just fantastic. All right. So to all of you out there, we really appreciate your um, joining us on this historic day um, to recap SpaceX Falcon 1, very successfully launched to orbit, and um, in a picture-perfect launch, picture-perfect separation, and uh, the mission is, is, was a total success. <laughs> so we're elated here. And so what we're going to do here is um, I'm going to go, we're going to go join everybody else to um, celebrate our accomplishment. So thank you again for all joining in, and we'll look forward to seeing you at the next launch. And check our website for updates, because we have a lot of information on there, and um, we'll be showing you things. We'll be showing you also the video from today's launch on our website, um, and also let us hear from you. Sign up from our, for our newsletter, and also send us any of your comments at media at SpaceX.com. So again, thank you very much. I'm Diane Murphy, and uh, good evening.